Hello and welcome to episode number three of the Mad About You podcast. I'm your host Madeline and this is a podcast predominantly about knitting, sometimes crochet, a little bit of sewing and just me living the craftiest life possible in Sydney, Australia. If you are a returning viewer, I'd like to say thank you very much for coming back and if you're a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. I hope that you enjoy what you see and hear in the next little time and um, you might join me for further episodes into the future. Um, so this is attempt number three at recording this podcast. Um, yeah, I've had a few technical difficulties in the last few weeks or so. So um, hopefully I'll be all over the content and um, yeah, we'll see how we go. So I've done some thinking and I'm going to give the podcast a little bit more structure. So I wrote out a plan a little while ago or on the second attempt which is about a week ago and um, yeah so we'll, we'll run through that and hopefully future episodes will pretty much stick to that format so um, you'll know what you're coming for and if you don't want to stay for the little bit at the end about what's been happening uh, feel free to disappear after that so um, first I want to talk about my finished objects so the first finished object I have is my Kodiak cow by the little blue mouse um, which was my first ever brioche project other than the brioche swatch which I think I showed in episode number one and so this is it here um, so that's the right side and then this is the wrong side um, yeah so it's a free pattern on Ravelry by the little blue mouse as I said and I will pop a link below in the show notes um, just under the down bar at the bottom of the video so um, the yarn I used for this one was Woolen Boone and uh, Cleckheaton Australia Superfine Merino. And I, I've done some weighing and I had of, uh, for the Woolen Boone, which was the Boone DK and the Robin Sparkles colorway. Um, it's a DK weight shawl pattern, so that's eight ply in Australia, DK kind of everywhere else. Um, and it was 115 grams start gram skein to start with and I ended up with I'll just check my note 65 grams left so that's it here it's in a little yarn sleeve but um hope you can see yeah so it's actually the color's pretty true that you can see now so yeah that's all I had left which is I'm pretty good so I think what I might do is possibly make a matching hat don't know if I'll do an a brioche hat or another hat but um yeah it was a really beautiful yarn to work with and a bit of a treat that came from my first ever fiber share um, partner Paula in the US so yeah really happy um, with how it turned out it fits quite well um, yeah so I had 65 grams left of the Robin sparkles in the woolen boon and I had 2.8 grams of the Clarketon Superfine Australian Merino which is this dark um, contrast color here so yeah it's um it was a really simple pattern to to follow and there is a link to a YouTube video that's about 14 minutes long and it essentially takes you through every step of the cowl so the cast on the setup round um, how to knit the, the two rounds of the two colored brioche and then um, when you get to the end also like the final round and then the cast off so I went back to that video several times when I got stuck and yeah I'm really happy with how it turned out so yeah I'll just pop that one on so yeah it's it's really um, a great project and I'm so glad that I, I finished it and I managed to make it I'll just adjust my so that you might be able to hear me for I'll keep it on not that it's really cold enough inside at the moment but um, yeah I'm really happy and I've worn it out at night it's um, brioche makes a really 
um, cozy, dense, but stretchy fabric, and it's amazing, and it's certainly not gonna be the last brioche project that I make. Um, and then the next pattern, which was the secret knit from episode number two, is the Rafa hat, which is another free pattern on Ravelry by Hohi Locatelli. So this is it here, and it was made for my husband um, as a welcome home gift, because he was away for work for a few months. So yeah, he seems to like it. The wool was uh, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in the in a, a worsted weight yarn. And the pattern, a free pattern, like I said, and it was um, just a one by one rib pretty much the whole way around, except every so often it was a, um, a garter round. Um, so the size I made this one was, I started with the large, so I've done the cast on for the large size. And then when I got to the crown decreases, I actually ripped back and just made this section in accordance with the medium size because I popped it on myself and it was enormous at the time. So I probably could still wear it. It's quite slouchy, but it fits him really well. And I also think it, it looks kind of good if you just roll the brim. So yeah, um, that's that one. And I I bought two, two skeins, 50 gram skeins, and I had about um, 75 grams left. So one and a half maybe skeins of yarn. So if you've got two skeins of the same color and you really like a one by one rib, um, recommend free pattern it's a hohi pattern and they're always written really really well so um i enjoyed it i enjoy the fact that he likes the hat i didn't really enjoy the one by one rib so i probably for that fact won't make it again um, but it was a really really lovely um gift knit i guess um and good if i had have done my continental pearling it probably would have been really good practice but i I don't really like continental pearling, so I didn't. But if I were to make it again, that's probably what I would do. So that's it for my finished objects. Um, in terms of works in progress, I have three. Um, and or I'll just go through them in order of how I've planned them and I'll tell you more about the, the other one. So I don't think I've shown before, but I've seen them shown on my Instagram. Um, and I'll make sure that there's a slide at the back which has um, where you can find me online but I am making the coziest memory blanket by Kemper Ray. So actually this is another free pattern. Um, I do have some paid for patterns coming up. Um, but yeah, this is a, a nice stash busting project. So as you can see here, I've done 20 squares and each of these yarns or each of these squares have been done from a, uh, a yarn that I've actually used and made in a project bar one. And that it has been cast on, but I'm not counting it as a work in progress because I've just made the cuff for a sock. But anyway, I digress. So, um, yeah, this is from the first ever sock I made, uh, the, the second pair of socks, a sock for my husband, a sock for my grandma. These three are from my starting point by Hohi Ho Locatelli, another pair of socks, a shawl for my mum. These two here also from my starting point these two here are the tightly knit set by Hugh Loco and then it's a leftovers from that baby jumper that I finished in the last in the last episode um, we've talked about this one and then um, a pair of socks I made earlier this year a shawl I made earlier this year. And then the bottom three are actually from my Dotted Rays shawl by um, Stephen West, and the yarn is all circus tonic handmade. And this is just the Knit Picks for Lichy. So like I said, I've cast on the cuff for that sock, um, but I haven't finished actually, to be honest, it's just the cuff. So um, this year was supposed to be the year of the sock, but that just hasn't happened because I found too many other great projects that I wanted to make. So here we are. I did manage to get a stitch marker trapped on this square. I don't really know how. Well, I've stitched it in. Go me. Um, so, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. It's um, it's staying in there until I can figure out how to get rid of it um, without breaking the stitch marker, which I, I think I'm gonna have to do, but I've had these stitch markers for quite a while and eventually the bead loses the adhesive and it, it creates a gap and it'll come through. So, yeah, I think this is gonna be a very long-term work in progress because whilst I use a lot of four-ply or fingering weight yarn, yeah, the, and the squares don't take very long to knit up. It's more the fact of me finishing a project in order to put it in the blanket. But yeah, I'm really happy um, with it. Each square takes, you know, kind of 
I thought it was six grams, but the last few that I've wound off for six grams have had some leftovers. So it's probably between four and five. So it'll be a really nice cozy blanket when it's done. And I guess that's why it's named the coziest memory blanket. Um, my next work in progress I'm really excited about. So when I recorded at this episode the first time, I hadn't done any yet. It was that I'm about to cast on. And because it's taken so long for me to actually be able to record and make it work, which hopefully this one will, um, I've cast on Exploration Station by Stephen West. So I talked about this a few episodes ago, but this is the pattern here. What's the finished object of the pattern? And it's actually um, a shawl from Stephen West's uh, book number one, which is the shawls book. So I bought that as a gift for myself towards the end of last year. Um, and if you're in Australia, the book's about, well, the dollar's just gone bad again. But I think the ebook on Ravelry is about $35. So if you want to pay about 50, you can get a hard copy book and also a Ravelry download code, which gives you all the patterns so you can print it off. Because when I, I don't know about anyone else, and I kind of don't want to show too much because it's a paper pattern, um, but I like to mark things off as I go. So I just haven't done it so much this time, but you know, on here there's lots of, I would cross it off. Yep, I've done that section, I've done that section. The highlighted bits are all the color changes that I've done so far. Or oh, actually not all that I've done so far, but that, that are coming up. So without further ado, this is my Exploration Station So Far by Stephen West. And the yarn is Sweet Georgia Yarn in uh, Tough Love Sock and also the Cash Lux mer Merino. Yeah, Cash Lux. So yeah, this is what I've got so far. I'm working on that the final wedge before the brioche section, which is this coral, well actually it's called apricot color up the top here. And I'm only one, two, three, four, five, six goes back and forth before out of 21 before I finish this section. So hopefully I'll get some knitting done this weekend and I might be able to start the brioche section next week. So yeah, I really like it. I wasn't super sure on the apricot and the raspberry swirl, which is this color here together. I loved everything and I thought, oh, maybe this wasn't the right color for it, but I think it's working. And if you, I don't know if you can see, but it's actually the Cash Lux, which is this, these two, has Stellina and it's really sparkly. And um, yeah, I'm gonna really love wearing it. So it's the start of my exploration station. So, oh, here, I think this one needs a yarn sleeve. It's the apricot color with that Stellina. The light's not so great again. So I don't know if you'll be able to see. Oh, yep, there we go. Um, and then these are the other colors. So this color here is called ultraviolet and that's probably the truest color in the last couple of episodes that I've shown. Raspberry swirl and charcoal, which is this gray, gray color here. So, and also it's in uh, a project bag that I bought um, before I got a sewing machine and retaught myself how to sew um, from Circus Tonic Handmade. So Hannah made this bag a couple of years ago, I think, and I bought it in a shop update when I bought some yarn and it's a really good size. So um, fits four skeins of yarn, my Notions pouch, which is quite big and something that I made and it has a lot of stuff in it. Um, it's quite heavy. I'd actually like to weigh it and see how much I've got in there. Anyway, um, it fits quite a lot of stuff in there. So it's a, a good, good size and that's why I'm using it. So that's that one. And my final work in progress is a languishing whip. Um, and this is my der derived sock from the Knitting X Pack Wonderlust sock collection, which I signed up for earlier this year. And as you can see, it's a nice pattern sock. And it's not the pattern that I'm not enjoying. I think it's just the yarn. So the yarn's a Knit Picks um, Hawthorne Speckle that I bought a few years ago in an update. And I've used the other two skeins that I bought at the same time. And I thought, oh yeah, this will be really great. And I, more of that fiber revolution as a contrasting cuff and toe. I thought, yep, that'll, oh, sorry, heel and toe. Um, and I thought, oh yeah, that'll look really great together. Just not loving it. But at the same time, I'm too scared to frog it. So anyway, whilst I don't need the needles because I'm not on a sock kick, like I said, it's just gonna sit in my one of my cupboards and we'll see how we go for next year. 
or for the rest of the year. Maybe I'll come back to it. So, um, yeah, that's all my works in progress. So really, it's just the one, the exploration station. But what I want to talk about is some upcoming projects. So I guess sometimes this segment won't have anything to talk about or other times it will. And today it does. So I have previously talked about um, doing the Clark pullover by Jane Richmond as my first me size adult pullover, sweater, jumper, as we call them in Australia, project. So, um, I've done some more thinking, looking at the yarn that I've got for the project. So it's more of a, I had the yarn that I bought just on a whim, sort of. Um, and I've looked at the project and I just don't know that it's gonna work with the way it's strapped. So my next thought was that I would do, sorry, come back into the screen. Um, the Radiate um, Pullover by Hohi Lopatelli. I'm just gonna see if I can bring it up on Ravelry really quickly on my phone for you. Yeah, while that loads. So the yarn I've got is um, We Love Knitting, which is Claire, an Australian dyer from Melbourne. And I've bought a few things off her and I've knit, um, actually, you know, I've crocheted a hat and I've had all this yarn for a long time and I've just bought another skein so I will have enough to make this project. All right, so the pattern has loaded. get the best picture yeah so if you can see that there it's the radiate by Hohi so where that pink is I'm gonna use this color it's um mint mint pretty sure it's mint yeah so I bought this game a little while ago caked it up it was going to be this cowl actually but um, then I bought another skein, so I had two and I had to decide something to do. So it's kind of reading a little bit more blue-ish maybe, um, but it's really soft, 100% Australian extra fine merino, um, 100 grams, 210 meters, 230 yards. So that's those colors. And then also I have got some of the gray or the contrast, which is marble is the colorway. So there's a few different dialots which you'll be able to see. So I'm gonna have to pay really close attention to alternating skeins when I make um, the project, but I just pop that away. Um, yeah, I'm excited. So there's been a few times I've thought, oh, okay, um, I'll cast on for this project, but I haven't done that yet because I'm cracking on with my exploration station. So at some point in time, I will cast on a swatch, which I don't swatch very often, but I feel like a garment, something I really particularly want to fit. So I'm gonna take the time and swatch. Um, and then I think I'll just check my notes. No, I've said everything I wanted to talk about. So in terms of um, the next segment is um, an acquisition segment. So I think I've previously mentioned I signed up for Fibershare this round as well. So it's an international wool swap or um, fiber craft swap. So they've opened it up to a few more um, different categories, but I always sign up for knitting because that's what I do the most of. Um, and so because I, I did that, I had a partner in Canada, Genevieve, and she, um, in her brief, you fill out a survey and she really loved green. So I went to my local yarn store, Skein Sisters, and I purchased a skein of yarn for her, which I, I don't have. Um, but if you check out my Instagram, you'll be able to see a picture of everything that I sent to her. And so while I was there um, picking that up for her, I saw this skein here. So it's by Natural Fiber Arts. Um, and she's a dyer on the Sunshine Coast, which is where I grew up. And so I bought a skein for Genevieve because it was called Little Cove, which is a beach near where um, my family live. And um, I have vis I visited recently with one of my good friends from high school. Um, so anyway, that beach kind of has a soft spot for me. So I thought, well, that's really nice. The colors were beautiful. They met her description. Um, and they're about a local place where I grew up. So then when I was there, I bought this color, which is a bit more of an emerald. And then it's early-ish morning and the sun is changing the lighting. So everything's not as true as it was when I first started recording, but that's this one here. And I've always talked about wanting to do the Cobook hat by um, Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Networks. 
Um, and so that's supposed to be a DK weight plus a mohair or a lace weight. So um, I did a order from Wool Warehouse, I think it was, or maybe We Love Knitting. I think it was Wool Warehouse. And um, anyway, to get the free shipping, actually, I think I paid shipping. I was aiming to get free shipping, but then I decided I wasn't worth spending money on things I didn't need. Um, I bought this color, oh, this skein here, which is a Debbie Bliss Angel. It's a um, super kid mohair and silk blend. And they don't have colorways, they just have dye lot numbers. But I think those two, whilst they don't look like they'll go together really well here, I think that they'll be all right for that hat. If not, I'm gonna make a hat for myself anyway. I'm not really a massive green person, but this is kind of a bluey robin, well, robin egg kind of color. And I'm, I like it. So at some point in time, I'm, I've done a few hats recently and I've quite enjoyed them. So not something that I was particularly, um, thought that I would like um in terms of the oh just pulled my microphone and that's just knocked everything off there we go sorted okay I think I'll just yeah that's better um I've got a little box of things I put together of um, other things that I recently purchased or received so first on my list was these knit prosings so I didn't mention for my cozy memory blanket is that I was using um, three millimeter knit pro DPNs to to make this blanket um, and we were going on holiday and I thought oh, it'd be really good to have it on a, a short circular so it's a 40 centimeter which I think is 16 inches and I have an interchangeable set which I'm going to talk about um, in a future episode that I really enjoy um, from Knitter's Pride but I thought I'll try this knit pro well I tried a different um, I bought a different needle and I took it on my holiday and I got there and I put it in my needle gauge and it wasn't right size. So that's what spurred me on to do the wool warehouse order and I bought this one. So I haven't used it yet because I haven't finished anything to put a new square in but I've checked the needle, the size gauge and as you would expect from the same company, it matches. Hallelujah. I was going to be really upset if it didn't because it had come all the way from the UK. And the only reason I got it from the UK is but I, I couldn't find a, a supplier in Australia. I tried, you know, eBay, local yarn shops. The one local yarn shop that I usually get Knit Pro stuff from is like a family owned business. And um, the woman who runs it has just fallen pregnant and she's on maternity leave or not just fallen pregnant, but she's on maternity leave. So the shop is closed. So I've been trying to shop local as more, much as possible recently as I can, but in this case I couldn't. So whilst I was there, I picked up a few other things. Um, I got this Addy needle gauge so um, it also has the well it's the needle gauge but I actually bought it for the swatch measure which you can see in here um, and the reason I did that is because well I, I don't like swatching um, and I always have trouble measuring and, and whatnot so I had a smaller um, swatch measure but I, I wanted one that if I made the swatch big enough it could just sit on there and I could easily count my you know, my row gauge and my um, needle gauge. So that was that. Um, and then when I bought that yarn from my local yarn shop, I also bought these Coco Knits um, stitch stoppers. So I bought the colorful ones and they're just a little foam needle stopper. You can see. So, I'm oh, sorry, that comes out. I haven't used this size yet. Um, just goes on the end of your circular needles or I guess straight needles so you don't drop any stitches off. So really happy with those. I've only used one size so far, but yeah, they've been great. Oops. And they come really small. So um, for each of six sizes, 24 pieces, US 0 to 15, 2 to 10 millimeters made of EVA foam. So anyway, um, yeah, that's tiny. That's like, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, that's pretty small that's probably two millimeter sock or two millimeter which I only really use for socks um, size. so that's that and then finally something I didn't write in my notes but is also arrived is my uh, a scale so I've been using a kitchen scale for weighing yarn for years and um, anyway I wanted one that measured into like points of a gram so I bought this one off Amazon Australia it arrived pretty quickly um, and so this is it here. Just turn it on. 
little welcome message. Um, maybe it doesn't like being held, I've not tried this. Oh yeah, it's freaking out. But see, you can see that right now it's like 13.3 or whatever that says. Oh, anyway, it's awesome. So that's how I knew I had 2.8 grams left as opposed to three. And I, I really wanted something like that because um, when I finish a project, sometimes I might have, you know, 20 grams left and I don't, actually that's probably bad, bad example. Maybe if I've got 50 grams left after a sock and I don't want to wind off an amount that's too much for this because then I'm gonna end up with like one gram and I'm also probably gonna end up with whatever was in the bigger size. So I wanted a scale that was more precise um, and Amazon Australia had those ones. So I bought that a little while ago. And my other thing, which I'm gonna talk about, oh no, I'll talk about in the next segment. So um, I had a lovely viewer message me um, and say that she really enjoyed the podcast and would I mind talking about some of my favorite things. So. Something I've come across recently, which is really helpful because of the shawls that I've been making. Um, and I even used it for this and for the flax light cardigan. It is Knitter's, Knitter's Pride. Yeah, Knitter's Pride uh, knit blockers. Yes, nailed it. Um, so they just come in a case like this and it's, uh, you get, I can't remember, 12 maybe, that are eight pronged like this. And so essentially, um, well, maybe next time I block it, I'll take a small video and I can include it in the end. But you lay your thing out on blocking mats. And I just use camping foam mats that I got for like $5 a packet maybe at Aldi or um, Bunnings. I, well, yeah, anywhere you can get camping gear, we'll sell them. Um, and so um, I soak it in some wool wash. And my current favorite is Eucalan. So it's an Australian eucalyptus one. Which, strangely enough, I haven't often been able to find in Australia, and the first time I bought it was in a Knit Picks order from the States, so that just seems silly, but um, I've been keeping an eye out for local um, wool wash and whatnot, and I mean, I have a big bottle of Euclid, so next time I need something else, I'll, I'll look for local. Um, and then there's another thing, which is my Coco Knit Stitch Fixer, which is probably in my... Um, notions pouch but I don't want to rattle around in there and grab it out so essentially it's just a mini crochet hook on both ends and it was really helpful when I dropped a few brioche stitches making this and I've used it so many times um, but if you are looking for an inexpensive option um, just a crochet hook if you've got one usually in a small size is what I use but um, yeah it's up to you but that's probably one of the best hacks if you are a a knitter who has previously crocheted or you have crochet hooks hanging around they're the best for um, picking up drop stitches I've tried to use bobby pins and bun pins and whatever in the past and the best thing that I found has been um, a crochet hook or this um, stitch fixer from Coco Knits which I picked up from my local yarn store um, I try to buy something every time I go just something little if it's not you know a big purchase because I think if we don't support our local yarn stores they won't be around anymore and I really enjoy mine so um, I try to support them as much as I can. I guess that's all I have in terms of knitting content and I'm almost at half an hour which I was trying to kind of keep them about 20-25 minutes so I'll just talk quickly about what I've been up to. So I've been back at work for two weeks but prior to that I went on a holiday with my husband to Vanuatu for a week um, and it rained for six out of the seven days so I got a lot of knitting done. I finished this this um, cowl I finished well I got this as to the state that it is so I think I knit seven squares on this blanket so that was really awesome um, so we got to spend some time together um, we did lots of things during the day still but there was one day it was like torrential and I think I knit four squares because we just really couldn't get outside of our um, little villa where we were staying so yeah it was um, a really nice trip and I've like I said I've been back at work so been kind of busy and um, I was hoping to record this yesterday afternoon and then I had an overnight shift, but I've come home and um, yeah, put this together. And I'm really hoping that um, once I try to edit this, I will be able to um, upload it onto YouTube. So I'm trying a different um, method this time and we'll see how we go. But that's all I really have. I think last few times I had more stories from my holiday, but there's really not much. It was a few weeks ago and I've done, a, you know, I've been back at work since then. Um, but we did lots of snorkeling, lots of stand-up paddle boarding. Um, yeah, it was, it was a great time to hang out together. Um, yeah, and like I said, I got some knee done, I read some books, so that was it. If you have any questions or suggestions for me, 
um, leave a comment below or you can send me a Ravelry message. Um, my Ravelry details or I'm at I'm, I'm Mad Bell, M A D B E L L on Ravelry. And my Instagram is at Mad About You, like on the sign. It's been lovely having a chat. Um, and I hope that you learned something or you know, you just enjoyed listening about what I've been up to. Hopefully next time in a couple of weeks I'll have done some of the brioche on my exploration station or maybe I'll have cast on that radiate by Hohi. So um, that's all I have for now. Have a lovely day wherever you are. Stay warm because it's winter down here. Um, not that you'd know it looking outside at the moment. It's beautiful. Um, that's all I have. Thanks. Bye.